Step one, keep your routine. What does this mean? Don't upend your regular schedule for finals week. Whether that's skipping breakfast because you want extra time to study or forgetting to work out because you want to study or negating your social relationships, etc., etc. Try to keep as normal of a routine as possible going into finals week because that is where you are going to be able to be the most focused and your body is just physiologically and psychologically most capable in that habit, the habitual state. If you start to mess with that right before finals week, you're going to introduce a lot of new variables that could detrimentally affect you while possibly trying to seek out the advantages of changing that schedule. The one caveat to this routine is that if you do it, try to get rest. If your normal routine is staying up till 2 a.m. in the morning, don't do that. If you have a final at 8 a.m. in the morning like me today for my biochem final, try to sleep earlier. But besides that, try to stick as much as your normal routine as possible because that is where you're going to excel and be the most ready for your exam. I have T minus 32 minutes before my biochem final, so I better finish eating and I'll catch you guys for step two. I just finished my biochem exam. And if there's one thing you take away from this video, it's that I employed all of the techniques that I'm showing you here and they work. That is why I'm trying to tell you guys them. So I hope you stick around for step two. I left with another donut. Again, take a professor who gives you donuts on finals. And with that, how about tip two? Study substantively and Purposefully. Now, what do these big words mean? I know this is quite intense because this is such a key part of your final strategies. Everything else is kind of just added on, but this is where the meat and potatoes comes in. This is the bulk of your studying. In order to do well on a final, you actually have to know what the final is going to be on. And for that, you have to develop a game plan. There's many different ways, like Cornell notes to summarize your notes at the bottom of a page. There's other ways, like I love whiteboarding. So it's where I just will try to process everything, all the complications and complexities in my mind, and just like regurgitate it out on whiteboard space. And then from there, draw connections and almost mind map. It's a way of being able to organize your thoughts out on a larger surface. And I've noticed I perform really well in exams when I do that for my STEM field classes. And then for essays, I also like this room because its temperature is nice, it's quiet, it doesn't have a lot of foot traffic. It allows me to just be able to write and focus and do well in that. And so this ties into kind of step three, which we'll find out next. But to be able to study purposefully and substantively means to find out a method of what your professor is, one, trying to teach you and what you're going to be tested on, two, being able to organize your thoughts, and then three, to spend the time. Because while you're watching this, is probably you want to find the cheat code, you want to find the hack to do better. First way, yes. Work smarter, not harder, but it doesn't mean that you get to skip all the time that it does take to be committed to doing well in the final. It's been two hours since finishing my biochem exam and my military science essay is finally done. I'm right now in Grammarly, as you can see here. I highly recommend get Grammarly. Even the free version is awesome. If you don't have time to proofread an essay or you don't want to read a thousand plus words of text when you're tired and it's easy to miss things because you've written it so your brain will just fill in misspelled words or gaps in sentence structure, etc. So just run it through Grammarly. And this has saved me for many essays. It is a great tool to just improve your writing and continue seeing success through that. So now that this is done, I'm going to head to the stack for lunch. And then in an hour, I have my creative writing final, which we have already finished because it was a short story. Mine turned out about 4,000 words, and we are just going to be discussing them, providing feedback for the last four students who get to have theirs analyzed. So on to tip number three, find your place. What I mean by this is this is Simperman 114. 
a room that I have actually grown quite fond of because it has here tables and not desks so I can do all my work and spread out my stuff. It has amazing whiteboard space to draw all my biochemical reactions and do reviews. And then also it is away from my dorm room. So this is the key mistake that so many college students do is they will use their dorm room for studying. My biggest complaint was that with this is that your dorm room is also where you sleep. And psychologically, you should never study where you sleep. You're going to find yourself more distracted, more tired, less focused, just less productive. And when you need all your energy channeled towards preparing for your final exams, studying in the room where you sleep is a terrible idea. So for that reason, I say find your place. Go out and explore. Carol's library was under construction for almost a year. <laughs> and so all last semester we didn't have it, half of this semester we didn't have it, and I had to find a new place. I used to love studying in the library, so this year where there are not many rooms, it became difficult. And I noticed that my studying and my ability to focus decreased because I didn't have my place. But the human body's adaptive, so I really have grown a fond of this room. And again, just being able to see how much we have here for whiteboard space and all that. Uh, has been able to be a way to express what's in my head out on other space and being able to process things better. So I highly suggest, one last time, just to reiterate it, find your place and you'll do well. Okay, so you found your place, but what comes next? <laughs> it's quite simple, but quite profound. It is a simple fact that your brain is amazingly capable. I'm sure you've heard people say, oh, trust yourself, be confident. There is a key crucial component and a truth to that statement. It is the simple fact that according to a Stanford study, if you can see here, the cerebral cortex alone has 125 trillion synapses, which can contain about one terabyte up to like 74 terabytes of data in the cerebral cortex alone. Some other reports, and mathematically it's quite complex, but they have said that the human brain can store like 2.5 million gigabytes of space. Think about your smartphone, it's impressive, but not that impressive. And so if there's anything else, I know college students, so many have just crippling anxiety and fears going into final exams, but there's, I think, a lot of power and a lot of ability to perform well when you can take some time to realize that this gift is powerful in itself. It is a supercomputer beyond anything we can build. And for that fact, you can do well on a final exam. What, 90 minute exam with the ability to have a thousand smartphones in your head? Whew, that's pretty cool. And last but not least, point number five for finals week. Make time to spend with your friends, your roommates, the people in your life. As an introvert, I know this is tough for me to say, but I do believe that you'll do better at finals when you take that time to just separate from your studying, enjoy yourself a little, play Doomlings. It's a fun game. So true. <laughs> with that, I hope the five final strategies here will help get you the grade that you have earned and help you succeed on your final exams. So rather than the usual closure outro I have, instead I'm going to have my friends do it. Ad Meliora! <laughs> Toward better things. If you found this video helpful, I'm sure you'll find this video likewise. And should you take 19 credits in college? Click it to find out.